I greet the church with the peace of the Lord. Let's open our Bibles. Book of Revelations. Revelation. Revelations 3, 7, and 8. Amen. And to the angel of the church is in Philadelphia, right? This thing say, He who is holy, He who is true, He who has the key of David, He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know you, your works. Uh, the church may be seated. The approach of this topic is a topic that you guys are going to start um, watching on future Sunday schools regarding this closing of the seven letters. Amen. Now, repeating what we always say here, you always hear on Sunday schools that the seven letters, they are the seven periods that begins on the Pentecosts and finish on the rapture of the church. In fact, in relation to this, no one ever disagreed with it. There is no uh, theologian that reads the Bible that has doubted or thought in a different way that the seven letters are the seven periods of the church. So a few may think in regards to time, but they are all in agreement. There is a unanimous um, agreement that the seven letters are regarding the seven periods, the seven times, subdivided throughout the history of the period of the church. It goes from the Pentecost and finished with the rapture of the church. The first letter, the doctrine, and then the death of the church, Pergamos, the destruction of faith, and now we are in Philadelphia, the fifth. What I want to tell you that you're going to begin to watch from future Sunday schools that the Church of Philadelphia and Church Lord said they're going to walk together all the way to the end. In what way? The characteristics of the Church of Philadelphia and the characteristics of the Church are going to be raptured. The Church of Lord says is going to stay. But at the time, prophetic time is Laodicea. We are seeing Laodicea. The Church of Philadelphia speaks of the friendly love. And the, and the text says, to the angel of the church, when you see the angel of the church, it's not that there was an angel of the church there, of the Philadelphia or Ephesus. The angel, regarding the original text, is the one who ministered in the church. Because the word angel is the, the one who ministers. He could have been a pastor or anyone else who was ministering to the church. So the word angels here is not that the angel from the Lord. The meaning is that the one who was ministering. So very well. The ones who had uh, that administers the church is the original text of the angel who is in the church. <coughs> if you may even say that that is the illustration of the pastor. It could be the pastor, the one who has the minister of the church. So to the angel who is in Philadelphia, Right. This thing say he yeah, the, the thing that truthful. So this who is the second to last church. It comes just before Lord said he has a very important point, which is the point of departure of the church, which is Israel. It's exactly like this. This thing is said to the holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. So when he said that to John, key of David, he is speaking of Israel, he is speaking of Jerusalem, which was the seat of David. 
So the fundamental point of the Philadelphia church is the birth of Israel. And the birth of Israel, without a doubt, is the first point, or we could even say, it was the pressing of the button on the timer for a countdown to the arrival of Jesus. Why? Because when Jesus was interrogated regarding how, uh, his coming, he said to the disciples the following. Remember those things. When the summer comes, the fig tree blossoms. And so the blossoming of the fig tree, the fig tree is a typifies Israel. There are two symbolisms of the fig tree in the Old Testament. One, Israel, and the other is prophetic prophecy. For the church's prophecy for Israel is the fig tree. The fig tree is a type of Israel. The blossoming of the fig tree or resurgence of Israel is compared to, you know what? Let us say, this bench that is here, one day, it was a tree, right? It was cut down. It was worked on. Now imagine, Marx, if, if you came here tomorrow and you saw this piece of wood blossoming. Can you imagine how, how crazy it is? How, how long this tree has died? For how long? For how many years this tree has been cut down and it has prepared? There is no logical reason why this tree would, would have life once again. But it's interesting if you if you came here tomorrow and there would there would be like a blossom on a, a, on one of those bands. Israel was the same thing, a uh, mass nation that has di disappeared more than 1,600 years, and now it is blossoming. So the fig tree is blossoming when the the church when the fig tree blossom is the beginning of, of the the key of Israel. And the key of David. So the church walks with the church all the same for the church, for the rapture of the church. So the church of Philadelphia it coincides with two very important things. First, with the birth of Israel, and second, it, and it speaks of the great revivals, which is Philadelphia, John Wesley, all of those men, Charles Spurgeon the ones from England. <coughs> the people would convert on the public squares and they suffered violent opposition, most importantly from the theologians. The theologians of the time, they criticized the way they spoke about God. They even say that John Wesley was crazy. The two bread brothers, and this was all Philadelphia, because in Church of Philadelphia, the message was, I'm coming quickly. So it is the countdown for the rapture of the church. So when it comes to Lao Tse, it's the, the time called soon. He's at the door, is knocks, in a knocks, who, if someone opens the door. So there are two things, the revival, there is a door that opens up, and Israel. That's why the church that is raptured has characteristics of Philadelphia, and the church that is left behind has characters of Laodicea. And what is Laodicea? Laodicea is the church that speaks. Philadelphia is the friendly love. Laodicea is rights of the people. Laodicea, Laos is people. Chicago's is right. And what is the right of the people? Everyone has rights. Even not to believe in God, the right to alter what is normal, the theory uh, regarding uh, uh, sex. So you can do anything. So that's what people fight over. Uh, in Brazil, peop uh, the person won uh, to present saying stuff like that. So the rights, human rights. It speaks of Lao Tse. When you speak of human rights, you speak of Lao Tse. Because the meaning of Lao Tse is the rights of the people. The period of the last church is when all of this would come on the avalanche. And why? Why, youth? You, you are the ones who are going to college. 
because the enemy has only one objective. And what is his objective? The enemy, at this moment, of the time called Sul, Lord Saint Philadelphia, they experienced the retained the water, did not get corrupted. But here in Lord Saint, he wants to hate what the mind. Exactly how it happened in Ephesus, the same spirit. And how does it work? There are two things that are very interesting that happened. In the beginning of the church, Paul speaks of this, which were the great difficulties of the church. What is the struggle that Paul struggle that Paul had to face in the beginning of the church? First, with what was with the philosophy. Philosophy took 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 over the church. We're going to speak on the seminar about something that is very interesting. What is a different approach regarding faith? The greatest challenge of the church today is called faith. Because no one knows what faith is. There is a Christian world that doesn't know what faith is. They confuse faith of the aspect of the creative work with the redemptive work. It is something completely different. We're going to see it and speak about it. And what happens in this moment of the church? There's an operation of the enemy to transform all of it in something rational. That's why the philosophy got together with philosophy. And people sometimes defend theology. I'm not criticize theology. I'm not criticizing theology. But the the majority of theologians, they were atheistic. Regarding uh, about a month or two months ago, the director of um, one of the greatest universities of uh, in Brazil, which is the uh, large institute in São Paulo, he wrote an article saying the following. I received the youth in college, so so excited, willing to know something, and they leave this place not even no, believing in God anymore. He said that you know why, because you see one thing, but that at this moment, what the enemy wants is to discharacterize faith. This is very simple. This is prophetic, and Christianity walks in this way. You know why? Because the enemy that attempted that attempted to destroy the doctrine in the beginning, Ephesus, is the same one who is here. Same thing. I usually say the following: When a woman gets pregnant and she begins to uh, do the follow-up with the doctor, the doctor tells her. We need to have special care in the first 12 first weeks. The 12 first weeks of pregnancy is called the, the embryonary period. It's not fetal. Fetus is an embryo. So we have three tissues. That's what is in the Psalm 137. David says this. I was a mass without form. Exactly, it was a mass. Three tissues embryonary. Each tissue is going to produce... Uh, a part of your body, it was a nervous system, uh, the, the organs of the body, the, the three uh, tissues. But at, in the beginning, they are taking the shape and characteristic of, of what they are going to become. So this phase called, the, called embryogenesis is very dangerous to alter this phase because it will result in a malformation, terrible malformation. If you interfere in the, in the biogenesis, you're going to have a, a deformed fetus. That's why the doctor needs to take care of so to prevent people from uh, taking a wrong medication or some viruses or rubella that can alter the pregnancy. Now, now after four or five weeks, it's no worries. The fetus are already been formed. It's just grows and matures, but the beginning is very important, and that's what the enemy does, does the same thing. When the doctrine was being generated in Ephesus, it tries to destroy it and alter it, because it was going to cause a very serious problem when he tried to introduce the uh, Nicolaites uh, theory and the Jewish theory inserted into Christianity. He was going to distort, destroy the entire Christian doctrine outside of the, the, the pattern of the word. He was not able to do this. 
in the council of Jerusalem was wonderful. And the book, uh, chapter 15 of Acts, shows how the Lord destroyed this. The Holy Spirit operated in a wonderful way. But look, the Spirit operated there continues acting to this day. Acts throughout all the periods, hides the Bible. In our days, it tries to secularize the word, acting on the minds. And that's why the people pick up the Bible and try to adapt the word to their, to their own desires, to their own measures, to what they think that, that that's, why, that's what is happening. Uh, absurd, absurd, absurdities. And these days in Brazil, I, don't, I received I don't know if you received it here. They sent stuff through WhatsApp. It's wonderful, right? They sent me a video from WhatsApp. A pastor, a pastor. He went to the TV and said the following. Today I will pray. Just you... I'm going to pray and any liquid that, that you have, afterwards the liquid will be consecrated and this liquid will bless you, will heal you, will deliver you. Pick up a glass of water. Oh, you don't have a glass of water? No problem. You can put a glass of a beer or even a glass of uh, whisk or tequila. Or, uh, you drink it because you, it will be consecrated. It's going to do good for you. He said this. It's a discharacterization of what? Of the faith. This is what happened in Ephesus. What the enemy tried to do in Ephesus, he's trying to do this today. Why? You see now, as you have seen, when you enter on the internet, Hollywood is doing movies about the rapture of the church. Have you seen it? Many. Many of them. All the stuff, the rapture of the church. Uh, and, and the nurseries that there's no children anymore. The grandma left and the nurse can't find the babies anymore. You know why? Just to ridicule the rapture of the church. This is very clear. The rapture of the church is a fiction. You see? It's in the movies. Poof! The person disappears. This is the operation of the enemy in this church of Lord's head. Which is the time in which we're living. That's why we're calling the attention to, for what the Lord is telling us in the moment of the time called soon. But we're going to have characters to Lord said, No, our characteristic is of Philadelphia. The church that loves the word, the turn to the word, and the church that uh, the door is still open to that church. And for this, it says, I'm, the Bible says that I'm at, I'm at the door and I knock. And the doors are opening up everything walks in a formula in a noteworthy way and then you say who is worried about this very few people are worried about it and you know why because another action of the enemy is to cause you to leave what is prophetic and enter into human reason. It's, it's better. It's better. You know what? Let me explain to you. When the church, when the doctrine of the church was born, in what period? In the period of? Say, the, the doctrine was born in what church? In Ephesus. Was the doctrine was born in Ephesus. And what the enemy do? This doctrine cannot go forward. So what do I do? Kill the church and then smear them. And I was not able, I was not able to interfere in Ephesus. I was not able to kill the church. So then he unites to the church in Pergamon to destroy the faith. Right? And that's what you're doing. You're watching Sunday school destroy the faith and take a look when he tried to destroy the faith Constantine who was Roman who adheres to the Christianity what does he do he brought paganism and, and threw into the church 
And what was paganism? Was a faith of what you, you saw. The, the church died on the arenas believing on something that was they could not see. Faith is the firm foundation of what you don't see. But Constantine wanted to introduce faith on what you could see was this destruction of faith. So this, this characterized the church completely. So then what happened? The Bible that had the project was hidden. So when the Bible was hidden, what Constantine did? He idealized in the church the, the dogmas of Christianity. What is the dogma of Christianity? Put everybody to rationalize. The end was perfect in the, in the conception. The rational conception was very interesting. See, the Bible is hidden. Buried. <coughs> and... Uh, uh, Vogat language, Latin language. So now they start to think how salvation is. Nobody has access to the Bible, so I'm going to create the enemy. So, so they created the dogma. What I was created, what there was the dogmas in the church. Which are they? First, the atheistic. The atheistic, is he going to heaven? You think that the atheist is going to heaven? No. Yeah? no, no, he's going to hell. Of course. Of course, he's going to hell. He's not going to heaven. <coughs> but there is even the good atheist. I had a friend. Atheist. He had studied to become a, a father and then he gave up. They are all very well educated. He did medicine. He was a brilliant student. He was a friend with me. No one treated patient better than him. No one. He stayed with the patient, helped the patient. Everybody thought that it was fantastic. Nobody did what this doctor did. And he told me, he told me, I'm a devil. I'm an atheist, but I'm a Christian atheist. And what is this? I believe that Christ existed. Christ was a great philosopher. So I like and accept the philosophy of Christ. I apply the philosophy of Christ, but I don't believe in God. Now I ask you, is this person, if this person is good. When he dies, where is he going to? To hell, right? He's going to hell. How about Hitler? Where is he going to? Hey, wait a minute. Uh, this situation is a little confusing. You think an athe atheistic like this, He's going to hell, but but he's going to the same place with that miserable Hitler that killed six million Jews. He killed women and children. No, it's not possible. It's not right. Him going to the same place like this atheist, but the one that that, that one has go to to go to hell. But this one, so then they built a dogma. Put this atheistic here to spend 50 years, one 100 years. And then purgatory, and after 100 years, he goes to heaven. This is dogma that was the, the church created. It was perfect from the point of view, rational point of view. Don't you think so? It's perfect. You cannot put these two, two people in the same place. A person that threw a plane on the Twin Towers, and he goes to hell, but somebody that's not that bad cannot be in the same place. This one goes straight to hell, and the other going to go to the purgatory, spend a little time paying for his sins, and then he goes to heaven. This is, it was a dogma. It, be, it exists to this day. But the Bible was closed. The Bible was closed. And the Bible said that salvation not by works, is by faith, but the Bible is hidden, so the dogma remained. There's a new interesting dogma. In my church, in the location where I was raised. The friend the friends of my mother, when they needed something, none of them called me. I never received a phone call of a friend of my mother to ask me anything. Mom was the one who called me. And he was said, Hey my son, is everything alright? And my son, I, I need I have a friend of mine. Yeah ma tell me. And she needs she she doesn't have means to pay. Can you help her out? Mom, can you can you send her to my my son? She's not good. She's not very good. Send her 
at answer help her today. So I had to help. I could not charge anything because Mama asked if if if, if I had to give medication. I would give medication because Mama asked. So then they, they use the same logic. If if you need something from Jesus, ask the mother. It's a dogma because the word was hidden. That was right. It's something that's not worthy. And the enemy of our souls did this. That's what the word says. You know the truth and the truth shall, shall set you free. So say. But you think that it's, it is so weird. But today is the same thing. The enemy of our souls attempts the same thing to take the take men to, to reason. So what is the reason? What is good? Jesus for this life. Jesus for this life. Is, is anything better than that? So think Jesus for this life. So Jesus for a cure, for, to heal you. In Brazil, who, who can go to uh, receive a waiting line for free health care in Brazil? So we need Jesus to heal you so that you don't have to uh, depend on uh, free health care in Brazil. So Jesus also can resolve your family problems. No, Pastor Jairo, he's already passed. One day he was in the clinic and Jairo came oppressed. He was, he looked like he was possessed. Jairo was really upset. And I asked him, what happened, Jairo? I was very really upset. Jairo was, as always, been very friendly. But he went to this great-granddaughter. And it's such a misery. The, the stove was not work. The refrigerator didn't work. He always had a little resource. He went to the store and bought a little stove, brand new, and brand new refrigerator and put in the house. And they said, oh, great grandfather. He prayed with her and left a new refrigerator and a new stove. And then I asked, what, Jared, what happened? Yeah, it was a month ago. I don't know what happened. Then I went there to do a visit and to see if everything was right. The fridge and the, and the stove were old. Oh, Grandpa, I put on the holy bonfire. Somebody asked, she w went to a church, she made a donation, and whatever you donate, you receive three times more. Whoever, of course it doesn't work out. When, and he was oppressed because it was a discharacterization of the faith. Jesus didn't come down from his glory to do this, in spite of the fact that he can do this, but that's not the foundation of the redemptive work. The foundation of the redemptive work is to bring men to have the right to heaven. In spite of the, the fact that other things can be added on to you. So see, my brother, we will live in a moment in which the church is the last church. There's no doubt. I'm going to say you yet another thing. I'm going to put on the internet people um, that's what I'm going to clarify here, since it's going to the internet. For the Jew, one generation. For the Jew, one generation lasts 100 years. He deals with in, in that way. One generation, 100 years. Oh, pay attention. Israel began in 1948, right? Today is 70 years. So Jesus said the following regarding the fig tree. When those things take place, look to heaven that your redemption, many of this generation will not pass without seeing the Son of Man. Look at this. You, and you know when this generation is going to end? 2048. I mean, they said that Jesus is coming until 2048. I'm not saying that. But for Israel, one generation is 100. I'm going to say even more. The first trumpet was sounded. The second trumpet was sounded. The third trumpet was sounded. The fourth is, is about to be sounded. And the church will be raptured on the fourth. It's revelation. The church will be raptured on the fourth. The three first have already sounded. I'm going to say this because another message. There's only fourth. Once the fourth is sounded, the church is going to go. 
because John saw an angel saying, "Oh, for uh, I'm scared of the, I'm sorry for the the church for the pollution of the earth, for the for the." And the trumpets are about to be sounded. The church is not going to stay for the great tribulation. That's why the church is going to be taken away on the fourth, and the, the first three had already sounded. And then, what now? The enemy knows that. He knows. The enemy knows. These little kids, I doubt that they will ever get married. Jesus will come sooner sometimes you say because there is something very interesting which is the following the church the church need to seek its target in the Bible about this prophetic moment I'm not inventing anything it's all in the Bible in all the evangelical church say that the Bible is the only rule of faith or practice. Everyone says this, so this is the rule of faith and practice. And the Bible is not simply for, so that you can do that uh, um, little box with... I've never saw a box with... Uh, there used to be a box with uh, Bible verse with little piece of paper with... Uh, notes uh, passages of the Bible and you would pick up the piece of paper and had a message a passage of the Bible I've never seen a piece of paper that would say get away from me Satan it's always uh, Psalms and biblical verses uh, good verses <laughs> but the Bible has everything because the Bible is whole the church needs to understand the prophetic moment which is coming this is fundamental. You see this in a very clear way. In what you see, and especially the youth. The youth. The philosophy and all of this that they are exposed to in colleges. I'm going to tell you one thing. I had a friend that one day came to me and said the following, Mateo. I believe in the cosmic energy. And everything I'm doing is the following. We need to attract positive energy. All this negativism and this think that everything is going to be destroyed. No, we have to think in a positive way. I'm adept to the and positive energy. I like positive energy. Then I'm gonna have you. Uh, I gotta have a solution for you. And he asked why, what, which one? You need to go barefoot. You get to the uh, to the bathroom, turn the the water on. Then at the barefoot, and put your two fingers on the electrical knob. You have a a positive charge. It's going to be fantastic. You're gonna see God. It's been so much energy energy that you're gonna see God. And he looked at me. If you, if you, if your idea is positive energy, there's nothing better than. Have you ever gone through this? So you go, might go crazy. If you like positive energy, then do this. It's a wonderful thing. Put your two fingers there. You might even see God. People sometimes, they're mystic, they're superstitious, and you know why? You know why? Because they haven't had an experience with God. That's the reason. The primitive church had. The church of Smyrna died on the arenas because they had an experience with God. The church that advanced in the Middle Age suffered. There were a few. Because God never always had uh, the faithful church follow Him. The church past that now we're allowed to say but the faithful Christian continue but not down in Brazil or America there are sermons here in the United States and I remember a teacher a teacher he was a cardiologist he had a very crooked life but one day he said the following he was I'm an unbeliever 
He said, the secret of America was the colonization, the British colonization. And people ask why? Because the gospel. And he said, because the gospel. And our tragedy was because we were colonized by Portuguese and the church, Catholic Church came. I'm not saying anything wrong about A, B, or, but, but why is that? Because in truth, the world, when it's opened up, it is our compass and God operates. And God does, has no nationality. Church has no nationality. Church has no nationality. It's not American, Brazilian, Portuguese. No. The church, the kingdom of heaven. Everybody get, get mixed up. No one will speak English. You're not going to speak English there. You're going to speak a uh, tongue of the angels. It's not going to be English or Portuguese or Russian. If you go Russian, I would not go to heaven. Nobody can say that. Speak that. The tongue of the angels. Right? That's why you need to begin to train here. People are baptized with the Holy Spirit and begin speaking in tongues. Amen. There are two spiritual gifts. Let me read them. I've seen during the period of praise two women, one with a very sad heart and another with a happy heart. When the song that was sang, Jesus, I want to love you. Oh, the angel visited these two sisters and touched in their lips with a life call that was in the author. And the Lord told them that the Lord is in the control of every situation. Amen. Very well. An adolescent in the school received an invitation to go to a party. But the Lord is telling you that this invitation will be to your spiritual death. I remember when I was a pastor by the cost four, and the Lord gave I, I they gave gave me a spiritual gift, and I I told the church about the gift, and I said the Lord gave a vision. Four people, four men of the church, they would go out on a boat for a fishing trip and never came back. These four guys all getting ready with the backpack in the car, going early down to fish on high sea. And one came to me and said, hey, we're all prepared. No, you can't go. No problem. You can't go, but you just, you're not going to come back. <laughs> can't go. Uh, the the fishing stopped, so now there's a little party with the adolescent. Who is adolescent here? <laughs> is there an adolescent here? No adolescent here. Are you adolescent? But it's not. It's not you. It's not going to be you. It must be another adolescent. Why are we going to sing? The Spirit of God. Very joyful. I always say to the church that I go to that I like to. I don't like accesses. I was even going to say, I'm going to want to spend a year in Miami. If you spend a year here, but I say to Jedu, there is a friend that wants to spend a year in, in Miami. It's going to do some, so much damage that it's going to be difficult to fix up. One of these days I went to his church. The church is full, packed. They have 500 people. People scream. It's terrible. People, if you, when you stop screaming, I'm going to preach. But the church grows. If you put it in Miami, they're going to scream until it's, they die off. But I, I don't like church. But that church, no one likes it. Do you like it? No, no. One day I went to a church and I said, uh, uh, I've seen a land. And then I asked, has anybody died? It's a burial service here. <laughs> oh boy, this is difficult. No, let, let's sing something. Uh, let's sing something. Uh, let's sing a song more joyful. This one is is happy song, so let's sing it.
Come to the church, stand up. Lord, we praise your name for your wonderful presence in this place. We glorify, Lord, for those who came, for the necessities that have been answered. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender. Hallelujah, God. Consolation of the Holy Spirit. Be with your church until the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. There is a meeting tomorrow at 8 o'clock, a vigil with the church. Everyone can come, right? And the seminar is Sunday. And look, I have said the following. The youth that does not watch Sunday school is not going to get married. We have been praying for this. Oh, you don't need because there's not going to be time for you. <laughs> is that going to be, well, you think that you're going to have time? Jesus is coming sooner, but that's all right. But those have, uh, you have to come to Sunday school, otherwise you're not going to get married. You're youth, right? So you need to come to Sunday school to learn, get married. Then you need to instruct the family. That's why you need to come. Until you learn this, you can't get married. You are maybe, maybe you're going to have time. I don't know. You're the lesson, right? Amen. 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 The service is over. Got upset? Because I said it's not going to have time to get married.